again. I tell you, I just couldn't get over it. Oh, really? Unreal. <clears throat> <laughs> I think there it goes. Can you see me? Yep. It's not turning us. What you want to do, Nick? It works. Turn off the light, huh? Oh, oh this one went off? Yeah, this is just a touch one? If you, if you, uh, Take that switch, all the lights go out. The uh, sw switch itself. But just I think that round circle is what makes up that light go out. I think that's it. plenty of light right there. Okay. You want them on or off? Um, the, the one is on still. So yeah. The, your just, reading light is on. Just give it a, little, a, a tap on a little touch, nudge, and it'll, it'll go on. It's working, but it's just kind of, I think they got to tighten the bulb or something. Because this one's on. That's fine, Grandma. It, it works. I think it's not enough. There we go. I think that's better. All right. Start out easy. When and where were you born? When and where was I born? Yep. Okay, should I say my, my name too? Sure. <laughs> my name is Pauline Daisy Lachman, and I was born February 7th, 1926 at, in La Crosse, Wisconsin at St. Anne's Hospital. Okay. My mother is Esther Miller Hill, and my father is Frederick Alexander Hill. Was there anything unusual about your birth? No. No? Do you know why you were given your name? I was named after both of my grandmothers. Okay. So that has special meaning then? I, both my your mother's mother was Pauline and my dad's mother was Daisy. So they called me Pauline Daisy. Okay. What was your birth order among your siblings? I was the third one. Uh, out of how many? I had eight brothers and sisters. Okay. What stories were you told about yourself as a baby? Did your mom tell you? Anything? Well, I, I can, she didn't tell me too many stories, but I did know that I was very frail. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had to, um, when I was in school, the government gave out, uh, had to weigh children if they looked like they were undernourished. Mm -hmm. And so I was so thin that they gave me a quart of milk every day, just for me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and on Saturday, you would give me a quart of chocolate. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to be witty all the time. Mm -hmm. But I was called uh, Lena most of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother and dad worked. My mother stayed at home. She never worked out until the war came. Mm -hmm. My father did all kinds of odd jobs. He was a school teacher. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. And then he went in into the First World War and he served on, as in the Navy on the USS Arizona that was sunk at Pearl Harbor. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What did he? What subject did he teach when he was a school teacher? What did he do on? What was he? A, uh, what subject did he teach when he was a school he was, teacher? He, he would, went to school when he was a young man. His parents died. They both. Mother and father died of <clears throat> the flu epidemic that went through the country. Mm -hmm. And he was 12 years old and he lost his mother and father. Mm -hmm. And in those days, town people would take in the children. They didn't have orphanages mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So my father was taken in by two old maid ladies, very nice ladies, and then they, he did odd, and then the chores for them and cooked and helped them. Mm -hmm. And then they sent him to school and they sent him to a school called Normal School what was popular back in them days. And my dad graduated from that. And then he went into the Navy. Mm -hmm. And then he was, went, that's where he learned to be a cook. Oh, okay. Wow. What are your earliest 
memories of your childhood? Well, I can remember my little brother dying. Mm -hmm. My mother came, he, um, he came home, well, in them days they mostly had your babies at home, but somehow or another mother, my mother went to the hospital mm -hmm. as, most of the times. And at this time, an uh, epidemic of whooping cough was going through our town. And uh, we, we all knew, we, my father knew we had whooping cough. And in them days, they quarantined you in. They put a big red sign on the door, and nobody could come in or go out. Mm. And so the nurse said, oh, no, it's just, they all got colds. It's got no, wasn't no whooping cough. So my father brought my mom home, and then my little brother got the whooping cough, and he died from it. Mm. And my dad, the nurse came up, and my dad said, you put that sign on the door, but he said, don't you dare come back and take it off, he says, because it's going to stand, it's going to hang there on that wall or that door till it falls off, and it did. Wow. Yeah, he strangled. My dad tried to save him, but he couldn't. Mm -hmm. So then he, that's, that's the first, you know, and we, everybody was poor. I didn't know what rich people were, and so it didn't bother us all at that time. Mm -hmm. It didn't bother, any bother us at all until we got older. Mm -hmm. Because within the radius of our world, we could only go like around the block. Mm -hmm. we, we couldn't go any further. Mm -hmm. my, my mother wouldn't let us, but she, we um, knew everybody, every single person in the neighborhood, and mm -hmm. they knew us. And so that's kind of the way we grew up. Mm -hmm. That was in La Crosse? Mm -hmm. We lived in La Crosse all our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So do you consider your childhood happy? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely happy, because mm -hmm. like I say, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. My dad would come home every, every night. He would come home with something in his pocket, and, you know, just to show us kids something. And he had one time come brought home baby mice. They were all little pink things about that. They were, my oh, gosh. my mother almost had a. Pet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and he, we always had pets. We always had a dog, mm -hmm. cats, birds sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, I wouldn't say it was a happy childhood, it was a poor childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then as years went by, then things got a little better. But my dad was kind of a, a vagabond. Sometimes he would take, go away and leave us for a long, long time. And mm -hmm. My mother would always take him back, but finally one day she just put her foot down and mm -hmm. take him back. And I was about 13 then, mm -hmm. but uh, he was a nice man. He never. Mm -hmm. My dad was a sing. He could sing and dance. He taught us all how to do the Irish jig in, in Charleston and all that wow. stuff. Wow! He always was singing. Mm -hmm. But he was he wasn't a family man. That's what I would would say. Sure. It was left to my mother to raise us. Mm -hmm. I always thought she was too stern, but mm -hmm. it took me a long time before I realized she had to be that way because she was only one. Yeah. Right. At first, our dad was fun. He'd come home with his pockets full of goodies. And, sure. Boy, yeah. All kids like that kind of person. Mm -hmm. Like, so. Definitely. At, uh, I was 16 when the war came. And I can remember that very vividly. Mm -hmm. My dad, or my, um, I was babysitting. And the people that I babysat for, they were at the American Legion. And uh, they came home early. Mm -hmm. And I knew then that uh, something was wrong, and they told me, but I didn't understand. We're at war, you know, that we heard about Hitler and all that stuff, but we didn't really know. And I got home, and my mother was sitting, we had one of the bay windows, and she was sitting there in the dark you know, by the window in the rocking chair. And she said, uh, she, not, she my mother never said, told us she loved us, or she never told us that, uh, called us by different names. She always called us by our own name, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the way she was brought up, evidently. And she said, she called me honey, and that's about the first time she ever heard. She said, well, honey, she said, we've got our work cut out for us, our country's at war. Mm -hmm. So then I had her, she told me about what that meant. And I, I, of course, I knew most my brother, Alma, was in the, was in the National Guard. Mm -hmm. He was 17 when he went to war. And he was over, overseas for four years, and so was, was Tony, but I didn't know Tony until after the war. Sure. And I worked in a war plant during in four years. When I was 17, I, my 
just right, about two days after my 18th birthday, I went to work in a war plant. And I worked in a room called the Bond Room, and I went in and they locked the door behind us, and we had to stay in there all day. And then they let us out at night because for security, because we were working on airplane dials. Mm -hmm. and so we had a big button that we had to wear. Sure. Do you remember what you got paid? Hmm? Do you remember what you got paid at that? What did I get paid? I don't remember what I got paid, but I don't remember uh, Dad's check, what, the first check that I got it in my pictures, in mm -hmm. the book, in the pictures. And uh, he worked 40 hour a week and he brought home pay was $30.10. So that's the way the wages were mm -hmm. back in the days. Mm -hmm. But right. you could go to the store and come home with a bag of ton of food, you know, two for ten dollars, and sure. you had ten dollars to spend. Mm -hmm. Nobody had no money. Nobody had nothing. Mm -hmm. the, the government helped everybody, giving them flour and sugar and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That you had, they call them commodities, mm -hmm. and you had to go to, the, to this place where they had them, and then. They would give everybody that stuff to, to eat. Mm -hmm. That was, and then my brother went into the war and he he signed a uh, paper that he, his part of his pay, the government somehow, some kind of a thing, I don't know for sure what it was, but he, he was able to send money home to us. Mm -hmm. So my mother would get a check each month because she didn't work. That's the first time my mother ever worked out of the house in her life was when she worked. During, started over at the rubber mill during the war. Mm -hmm. And she worked there until she retired mm -hmm. when she was 60. Mm -hmm. What was your relationship with your brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. What was your relationship with your brothers and sisters? What was what? Were you close to your brothers and sisters? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody was good to each other. We kind of picked on my sister too, he, Janie and I, but my dad got us, made us one day, we were picking on her and she was crying. My dad took us both by the ears, to march just over by two he says, kiss your sister and tell her you're sorry. Mm -hmm. If you any more of this, he said, that's the same thing's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Straighten you out. I could just still see Tootie sitting there with that smirk on her face. <laughs> that. Did you go to um, like a nursery school or... No, we kindergarten, to, or was it just first grade that you went to? We went to, uh, no, we just started right in, uh, I suppose, kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In first grade, I can remember school real well. I was the best reader in the class. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And that was quite an honor. I got to sit up behind this, like a easel, and it had a roll of paper on it. Yeah. And then we had to make, the pitch was out here, and then we had to sit behind and read what that was when the parents came. So I got to do that at home. I just thought that was pretty good. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. How big was your elementary school? It was a good size school. You remember, you know where Jefferson is? Yeah. That's that's the school I went to when I was little. Okay. So you had a pretty big class? Mm -hmm. You had a big class? Yeah, I would say so. Mm -hmm. you know? And then when we got to be seventh grade, we went up to Logan then. But by that time, we had moved over to French Island, so we were living on French Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to, I graduated from a lower French Island school. Mm -hmm. And then we went over to, the next semester, we went to Logan. Mm -hmm. How did you get to and from school? Hmm? How did you get to and from school? Walked. Did you? Walked from, um, you know where the, do you know, remember where Grammy Hill lived? Yeah. Okay. Well, we lived over a block on that block growing up, and then we walked from there to school and uh, back home at night. Mm -hmm. We carried our lunches. They didn't have, they didn't have lunches then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, but we moved around so much, but how we ever stayed at Jefferson School for so long because we were all, the houses that we lived in were right around in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then during that time, we got um, scarlet fever. We had to all be quarantined in. And the milkman would come and bring, my mother had to put a pan outside and he'd take the bottles and pour the milk into the, into the 
metal thing, and then she could take that in the house, but she couldn't take the bottles in because that was, uh, in, them, in them day, that was a, a very serious disease to get scarlet fever back then. And uh, everybody, some of them in my family came down with it. My grandpa, we had two great big huge rooms, a big huge kitchen, two bedrooms that way, and then this great big huge front room where the beds were, a big, big one. And uh, then my dad and my grandpa stayed in there, and then at least, but they had a seal door in between and everything. Wow. So we did that till the warm weather came, and then my dad, had a friend of, that lived up in French Island, Upper French Island, had a big ca a cottage, and he said Dad should bring us kids out there and let us play in the summertime and get some fresh air because we'd been cooped up so long. Mm -hmm. I was the only one that didn't get the whooping cough, I mean, get the kind of fever, but then I ended up getting it when I w we moved out to the French Island? French Island. Oh. So I was sick laying on my bed watching the kids play. <laughs> well, but anyway, it, it worked out, mm -hmm. but uh, then my dad got a veteran's pension, but they gave the soldiers and people that worked to go into the war, and then he bought a brand new Ford car of some kind, mm -hmm. and uh, managed to get into a wreck right away, so that he got another one, or got it fixed up, or got another mm -hmm. one, whatever. And we all went to a place called Spirit Lake, Iowa, and we stayed there for at a resort. And my mother um, had all of us, cause my grandpa was with us too, how we all got in that car is beyond me. <laughs> and uh, then one night my dad just upped and disappeared and left us, hey. just right there. We didn't have no house to go back to, we went back home and sold just about everything, a stick of furniture we had in the house. How old were you? Hmm? How old were you? I was about... I would say I was about 12 years old, mm -hmm. 13, mm -hmm. and uh, then I don't know what, how, whatever happened to us after that, but he came back and my mother she took him back again, and uh, then we ended up in a basement over, there, the, the basement is gone now, but there's a tavern on the two squirrels out there now. <laughs> uh, there's a, tavern on the corner called the L and M Tavern. And then it was a great big hotel across the street. And uh, the man let us my dad rent the basement. Yeah, it's that wasn't so good. Yeah. That little childhood is fun because you don't remember the hard knocks, but once you get to be about ten years old then mm -hmm. you you know what's going on. Sure. And uh, so here we just Muddled on through, but I didn't graduate. But when the war came, I went to. We were all in school, and and I was going to be. <clears throat> I had pneumonia one winter, and I couldn't go to school, so I got put back a half a grade because mm -hmm. they had three A, three three A or and two A or whatever A and B. And one half a year you'd be A, and other class. And uh, Janie, my sister Janie, that got ahead of me in school, so that didn't make it any easier for me. I didn't like school, because mm -hmm. that's when I first realized how poor we were. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had the same dress. My aunt and my mom would make, they, in them days, the government gave you that flower and stuff, and it was all material uh, that you could make clothes out of. Mm -hmm. So Grandma, or Mom, and Aunt Belle, they would make dresses for us. and. Um, Coats, they take old coats and make them down. And, and I never had a new co uh, coat just for my own self till I was almost 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I can still tell you exactly what that coat looked like. What did it look like? It was green and it was just a plain button down the front, but across the back it had a belt with two big buttons. Mm -hmm. I remember how proud I was wearing that new coat. Yeah, you, everybody was tickled for everything, but we never wore shoes. Nobody ever, the kids played around, running up down the street with bare feet. Mm -hmm. But when the school came, everybody had to have shoes, so mm -hmm. that's when you got shoes. Mm -hmm. Which friends do you remember growing up in school? I can remember quite a few of my friends. I still, some of them are still alive and some of them are, in, in fact, 
One called me the other day, just clear out of the clear blue sky, because she had seen my picture in the paper about my birthday party. Sure. And uh, so then we had a nice long talk, and we remembered playing down on the Copeland Park and going to the park and having good times. And I can just her, her name was Margaret. She was an Irish girl. I forget her name. I don't know her her last name now. But she had one one young brother that was crippled from a polio. Mm -hmm. He was in a wheelchair. I remember him really well. Mm -hmm. All the kids in the neighborhood was kind to him. Mm -hmm. What? They yeah, stayed. Well, then anyway, I went back and forth. Went to school till I was almost seventeen. I was seventeen, and of course I was old. I just didn't want to be in school no more. And so I went to downtown and finished going to school at um, WWTC, where mm -hmm. that is. That used to be a, a different kind of a school for kids that got uh, knocked around, didn't want to go to school mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And the, the place you could still get your diploma. Sure. And so um, then when I turned, three days after I turned 18, I got a job at the automotive plant, the war plant. And, mm -hmm. and that's where I went from there. Then I was was more or less on my own, but I still lived at home with my mother till I got married. Mm -hmm. What was the first motion picture that you ever saw? Oh, I've seen those a lot of times when we were little. They don't cost a nickel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My dad would give us a nickel and a penny and we'd go, we'd go to the movie and we would go to um, the sweet shop and get one of those big red suckers. Sure. And then we'd go to the movie. Yeah, we went to the movies a lot. Okay. Because they only cost a nickel. And my mother and my Aunt Belle, they just loved to go see Betty Crawford, or uh, Joan Crawford, and oh my. That was a big deal. Boy, this one old lady next door, she, Mrs. Story, Grandma Story, she had a white apron. She's always cooking. The Syrian lady. This is the nicest lady. Pure white hair, and a white apron. And she'd grab her, get her work all done, and she'd grab her apron off, and her mom and Aunt Belle would go up to see the movie. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah, we didn't we didn't have much much things to do, but but, but we enjoyed those things. Mm -hmm. What were your favorite radio or television shows? What? What were your favorite radio or television shows? Well, well, I like to. We all like to listen to the Shadow Knows. Everybody liked that picture. It was a spooky show. The man would come on the Shadow Knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, that we watched that, and and uh, but when the movies came on, mostly we liked uh, we liked all the funny shows. Mm -hmm. We we really enjoyed them. It'd be what was uh, that? Oh, I can't even think of the names anymore. They're so old, but mm -hmm. they were. Uh, I love Lucy and all those kind of shows, and we loved Star Wars. We got. But later on in years, then Star Wars come on. We really like that. And but we like to watch the the comedies and, and kind of things. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what was this one lady? What do you leave it to Beaver or those kind of things? We sure, to watch all those. Okay. What were your favorite things to eat when you were little? Things to eat. What were your favorite when you were little? Well, I. I was a pretty good eater, except I wasn't much for meat. Mm -hmm. But I, I like fish and cheese. I like cheese a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother could, was a really good cook, but she, my dad cooked more than my mother. Mm -hmm. He would get up and always made breakfast, and he would make us whatever we wanted. We could have, he made cornmeal mush, he would make that. And then the, back in them days, they called it farina. It's like cream of wheat. Mm -hmm. Or he would make, uh, Egg and make a hole in a piece of egg and egg put an egg in the middle yeah. of it and toast it yeah. and make that for us. But we just, we just had plain food. Mm -hmm. But my dad at Christmas time he would make lasagna and him and my uncle Mickey they would clean that big black top of that big black stove and shine it all up and then they baked lasagna until it would they have a pile like this and then everybody in them days would hand out if you have a lot of something then you would give some to your neighbors all around. They would come back, and if they had more than plenty, they would come and bring some of that stuff to you. That's the way we did back in them days. Mm -hmm. Everybody did that on our on our block. Mm -hmm. And um, the Meldies, we had the Meldies, we had 
the Syri we have the Syrian people, the Joaquins, Abrahams, we have well, I just just about every kind of a ethnic group of people that you could want on those two blocks. And uh, that's how I like to uh, learn how to make like grape leaves and stuff like that. I learned sure. that from them days. And the people just, they were good friendly people. I love them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to this day I can still see those girls, those nice girls. Mm -hmm. In fact, I did see one of them just the other day. And she gave me a big hug. Mm -hmm. She's still around too, just like me. You know, her name is Elaine Monsoor. And she come up to me at one of the, I don't know what it was, Oktoberfest or what, but anyway, she was so happy to see me. Aww. Still lives in the same house. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. What birthday do you remember most when you were little? Any of them? Well, I, can, I remember lots of birthdays. We never, that was one day my mother always made sure you got a cake. She, my mom was good that way. She did those things. And uh, she, Made the orange jello, my favorite. I to this day I with bananas in, and she we had a big wooden or a big uh, cement porch on the back outside, but it didn't have no upper top. It was just a platform like a big cement porch, and uh, she put it out there to get hard, and the cat got in. <laughs> oh, no. We didn't have no. We just had cake that day. <laughs> That's great. I went to work at, when I was 18 years old, three days after I was 18. Mm -hmm. yep, that's the starting of a new life. Mm -hmm. how, how important was religion growing up? How much what? How important was religion was growing up important. in your family? We were all baptized in, in the Episcopal Church on 9th and Main. Mm -hmm. My mother saw to that. We all went to catechism class and we went to uh, what they call Kemper Club once a week. And we got, had a meeting, and they would. Well, we went on picnics and things like that. But uh, uh, we had learned our catechism before we were being able to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. So we were confirmed, and, and we, it was all very important mm -hmm. to my mother that we went to church every week. We went to church, mm -hmm. and we walked all the way from the north side to Ninth and Main to church. Wow. And uh, that was all of us too. Mm -hmm. And Elmo, my brother Elmo, and my brother Daryl, he really took to it. He almost went to be a Episcopal priest. Really? Because mm -hmm. he was president of the Kemper Club and all that. Because the younger kids come along, they had a better life than us older ones because they didn't go off into depression. Mm -hmm. But that was uh, one of the proudest things that my mother wanted us all to have the go to church. Mm -hmm. So that's, and with the father of Inter, he would give us a nickel. My sister Janie and I a nickel to take the streetcar home. Mm -hmm. And so Janie and I would go down to the and spend the nickel on candy and then we walked home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so what religious holidays did you celebrate at home? Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, Easter, for sure. We celebrated all the holidays. Mm -hmm. We even celebrated uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day. Every oh, we had always had something special every holiday, mm -hmm. no matter what. But mm -hmm. Christmas and, and New Year's and and Easter was our best ones, mm -hmm. probably. How did you celebrate them? Well, always with food, mm -hmm. always something good to eat, and mm -hmm. get nice, pretty dresses, the best we could get, mm -hmm. and went to church. Mm -hmm. And we went to church on Christmas Eve always, mm -hmm. and um, the churches all gave everybody, a, a little children, a bag with oranges and apples and candies and nuts in it, too. That was a good, good point to go to church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and on uh, <coughs> Easter, the, the great big um, trucks, soldiers would come in great big trucks with eggs to the parking lot up by Logan High School, and they would give everybody free eggs. Mm -hmm. So us kids all went up and got eggs and my mom, we all colored the eggs and, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, that, on that part we didn't come up short because my mother was good about that. Mm -hmm. I think she kind of had fun doing it too, like I, I always had fun doing it for the kids. Mm -hmm. 
Did you have an extended family that would come over for holidays, or was it just your immediate family? No, well, it would mostly be the family. Mm -hmm. uh, my aunt Valen would, Mickey would come over in the afternoon visit or something like that, but they never, they had their children too, so they would sure. have their things at home. But we never had nothing like what uh, we have now, mm -hmm. all those. Mostly it was just a family affair back then in the days. Can you think of any funny stories that happened when you were little? Funny stories? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that wasn't. That was when I was married at at home or in my own house. That that's the funniest one. What was that? Well, I was getting ready to go to work, and the kids were all in bed, and and drum have, Well, Dad wasn't up yet, and when I say Dad, I mean Tony, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I was sitting there and I had this round mirror on the table and I was fixing my hair and I kind of moved my foot and I felt something cold against my foot. I looked down, here was a toad. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't stand stuff like that. You got a steak and I, oh, I screamed and I had, I had about two jumps and I was by the bottom. Tony came running, what's the matter, what's the matter? I said, there's something in the kitchen. <laughs> And it was, that's Steve, you know, he had it in something, but it got out. Sure. You know, underneath the kitchen table. <laughs> that's great. Oh, God. Oh, funny. Um, yeah, was, there was probably lots of funny things. I got a scar right here where my brother Elmo threw a, a fork at Tootie and it hit me. Cut me right there. <laughs> that's great. My mother was more worried about the, care, the lamp shade on the kerosene lamp. We didn't have electric lights, so way long time we always had just lamps, you know. Mm -hmm. We had to wash and shine those chimneys. Mm -hmm. That was a good job we hated the most because we were so scared we would break them. Mm -hmm. So did you always have indoor plumbing? Outside, outside plumbing. Okay. Outside toilets. Mm -hmm. So when, when do you? Most of the time we had outside toilets, so we moved to town. Mm -hmm. I think we we no we had yeah in the, that's funny funny story. Mama was riding her on the bus to go to work at the rubber mills, and here here was a our toilet sitting on the side of the road. Some boys had come over and picked it up and moved it. They did that for a, a prank on Halloween. Oh no! She, how she knew it was ours? It was painted blue. <laughs> That's funny. Do you remember your first date? Oh, God, no, because I didn't have many dates. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see, my first date. Hmm. Well, we went a lot with the, with the whole gang, you know, all, a bunch of us girls went out together mostly, because mm -hmm. the boys were all in the war. Yeah. The class that I was supposed to graduate with, there was uh, 13 graduated. And, uh, and the boys were, it's mostly all boys, or all girls. Mm -hmm. The rest of the boys were in the war, mm -hmm. and a couple of the boys got killed. Sure. And in fact, the lady that lives on my floor here, Edith Wheeler, she was lived down at the end of the fall here. She was, uh, her and John Fenanger were a couple. The sweetest, dearest girl she is, nice. And John, too, mm -hmm. he got killed in the war. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, quite a few of our friends got killed in the war. Young boys should have never been there. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a war. This is what we got here. It's not a war. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the first date I think had to be with my my boyfriend Lloyd. I eventually got engaged to him, but uh, he was four after in the war. There was some didn't go, get to go to the war because they were four after for whatever reason. He never did tell me. But um, I got engaged to him when I was working at the Adelaide plant. Boy, then they took all the ones that were 4F and sent them over there for the Army of the Occupation. So he had to go over there and stay, and he didn't know for sure how long he was going to stay. So one day I got a letter from him, the girls write the Dear John letters. Well, he wrote me a Dear John letter and, a, and uh, said I better go out and have fun because he didn't think he'd be home for three years and all this good stuff. So 
and he meant that, mm -hmm. but he didn't do it just to brush me off. Sure. And um, so anyhow, he uh, that's what happened, and I got good and mad at him and said, okay, I will, so that's what I did. And then it, by that time the soldiers were able to get their jobs back at the Autolite plant because it was a union shop. Mm -hmm. So when they came home, they had 60 days to report to work. So Grandpa came back at 59 and a half wow. days. <laughs> it took his time. That's just the way he was. <laughs> and so then he got his job back, and that's, that's how I met him. Mm -hmm. We went to union meetings, and he was, was at the union meeting, and that's how I first met him. But I had lots of dates with my boyfriend, Lloyd. Mm -hmm. I really, really was in love with him. Mm -hmm. The first person that ever told me he loved me, so I guess that's why. Sure, sure. So do you remember your first date with Grandpa? No, I really don't. Mm -hmm. Sad. But well, I'll, I'll tell you actually what it was. We were all, the girls and all of us were at the uh, union meeting. And he would always come in and look around the room just like to see does anybody would be interesting. And then he'd take off and he always dressed real. Oh boy, he had that's the, the top of the shelf close wow. from Nelson's up on the north side. In fact, I was kind of embarrassed because the other boys just dressed more casual anyway. He had a white shirt and a tie, and especially on the weekend. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they came in and somehow or other we all got in the car and we went over to the Crescent. To a place that had a dance, and uh, and I just kind of knew him. He probably just called and asked me for a date, but then he knew I worked at the plant, so that's how we got talking and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, that I could have had about three other guys though too at the same time. That was what was interesting <laughs> for once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it uh, we just made our way. And I got, uh, that's the first time I left my mother's house then when I got married in Jerome and I got a place down on, on uh, Badger Street. Okay. And that's where Jerry was born. Mm hmm And then we moved over to another street that way. And then we, after that, we got a little house then. We lived up on Indian Hill all that the rest of the time. Sure. Oh, I forgot to tell about the story that um, when you ran away, when you were, oh, when your girlfriend moved away. Oh, yeah. My, mm -hmm. my best girlfriend, Betty O'Meara, the Irish girl, best friend I ever had. And she'd come home after school and we'd make egg sam fried egg sandwiches. And she showed up me how to make fried egg sandwich and we'd fried potatoes. And, and anyway, her mother moved back out to Sandpoint, Idaho. And my that's when my father was gone. My father had been gone long, many years. Mm -hmm. He was all actually in jail mm -hmm. for a while. But then just with Roman and stuff like that. And uh, Father Vinner, our priest at school, uh, ch a church, tried to talk my mom into taking him back. But she, my mother just had had enough. And she got a taste of being out in the world, going to work. And that's when women started getting their idea that they were just, if they can had to go out to work, they could be treated equally. Sure. That, that's when I first started, and I was a good member of that. Mm -hmm. And so anyhow, it was, uh, that's how that happened. And then, see, I had, uh, well, I'm, I'm forgetting, you know, I'm going wrong about that question. What was that question? How you ran away. Oh, well then, my dad, he, he stayed at our house, but he, had, you know, he didn't sleep with my mother, but mm -hmm. he stayed at our house and then they would fight just, it was just horrible. Mm -hmm. and there I was, 18 years old, and I remember them fighting all that time when I was young. I, was so, I would be so scared. I would hate to see night come. I just, mm -hmm. when, I, when night started to fall, I would, I would just be a wreck. I'd be looking down a to see if Dad's car, Tony's car was coming, because my dad left us so many times that I just, it took me, I figured it out, my own self in my own head. Mm -hmm. Finally one day I just, because Tony was straight to the arrow, he was, he was home, you know, but I didn't trust him, I didn't trust him, no, no, that was all my dad did. 
and I could just figure that was going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. And so I came home from from uh, work or whatever I was doing, and it went, Janie was working at the ice cream shop up there, and I put on some clothes, and I come home, and these young boys were out in their car, like you know, showed them with their hanging their legs out, and that kind of. That's the way I was back then. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Kenry boys, oh, they were brats, mm-hmm. and they said. Yeah, the old man must be gone. They're all quiet up there today. So I heard that and I just marched upstairs, changed my clothes, got dressed, took whatever money I had and went. I stopped by my sister Jane. She made me malt the milk. I ate, drank the malt milk. I could do that in that days because I had my ulcers, but I got them then. Mm-hmm. Then I went downtown at uh, Dime store, one of the dime stores bought a great big bag of popcorn. Out I went over the top of the bridge, walking. And I got made it clear out to um, this place in Minnesota. I should never forget that. It's two towns. One town is on one side of the railroad tracks, and the other town is on this, just like the city, mm-hmm. like um, Minneapolis sure. and St. Paul. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, this one man that was gave me a ride, he told me what, that I, sh- I should be very careful, and I was lucky. Mm-hmm. So he, he told me where to go to stay because I could get a room for, for about a dollar and a half. Mm-hmm. And so I did that, and he said, but when you somebody gives you a ride, you're going to the next town. Don't say I'm going to Sandpoint, Idaho, so it was head. Mm-hmm. He said, don't tell him that. He said, you just tell him, say, I'm going to the next town and then just get out and get another ride if you want. But he said, if you want to go home, I'll give you money and you can get on the bus and go home. And I said, no, I didn't want to do that. So anyhow, that's what I did and uh, I got, uh, oh, I know how it was. I checked in, I wrote my name down where I lived. A little gullible Pauline. <laughs> and next thing I know, here comes the knock on my door and stands a great big policeman. Uh, <laughs> he took me to jail, <laughs> but he did put me in the jail. He put me in a cell, but he, he left the door open. It was right by the chief, by the chief of police's uh, desk, and uh, he talked to me. And he said, you "No," know, he said, "I could right now." He said, "I could take it, let you stay here." He said, "If you were just about three months older." And that's what I would have needed to be 18 years old, and, but I was still underage, I had to go back home. Mm-hmm. So I got on a, I stayed overnight at a lady's house who was kind of, uh, must have been a custodian at the jail or something. She had two children, and uh, I stayed overnight with her. We had a nice talk, she was a very nice lady. And her little boy had would have seizures, and we went to the movie the next day, her the little girl and I and the boy. And he had a seizure, on, and uh, his little sister just knew exactly what to do with him. Mm-hmm. Felt so sorry for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, so they put me on a train and sent me home, and the train was loaded with all these soldier boys coming home from the war, and boy, I had a time and a half. We played cards, and oh boy, they thought I was pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's funny. Yeah, it was. It was, it was nice. Mm-hmm. What were some of like the fads or the trends when you were a teenager, like clothing and stuff? Harachis. Which were what? Huh? What were they? Like what? Uh, summer shoes, like was a weave, like your mother got that pretty pair, only they didn't have no backs in them. Oh, okay. They had a, a, a bu- belt, a little buckle around sure. the back. They're called harachis. Okay. And they're weaved right into the shoe. Oh, okay. And uh, and uh, boys' sh- uh, boys' shirts, white shirts. Mm-hmm. With cra- the girls were crazy about that. That had boyfriends. And uh, I don't know, these skirts and those uh, corn stick shirt uh, skirts where they wound all the their skirts around a broomstick. Mm-hmm. Those kind of things. And uh, we had a roomy sale at St. James, and we had them that high. I wished I would have took some home now and put them away. Wow. Girls will start to wear them again. But anyway, that was um, 
that was see where I, my boyfriend came went overseas went over to some place over in Germany or some place where he went for, when he went when he was far off. And then but in the meantime I met Dad, mm -hmm. and so then that was too late. Mm -hmm. But I'd see him from time to time. He mm -hmm. just passed away. Did he? Yeah. Lived all alone. Mm -hmm. So, what else? Mm -hmm. Did you ever skip school? I don't think I ever did. Mm -hmm. We were taught not to do them kind of things. Mm -hmm. My mother was very strict with us that way. Mm -hmm. What did you do in the summers when school was out? What did I do was babysat. Mm -hmm. First job I had, I babysat for a young boy and his mother and dad worked at the Autolite plant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would uh, clean her house, take care of the little boy, and get their supper ready for him. And then she would, uh, back in them days, they sprinkled the clothes with water and then rolled them up and put them in a basket and then you stood and ironed them. And she'd have me iron her clothes and the next day she had all them back in the, back in the basket, folded up and get rolled up again and made me do them over because I didn't do them good enough the first oh, time. No. Three dollars a, a week. Oh my gosh. Five days a week you worked for them? Five days. Wow. That didn't last very long. <laughs> I can still see her old oh, woman. She was, oh, she was awful lady. Her husband was a nice fellow, but mm -hmm. she was she was a witch. Sure. Who did you turn for advice when you were a teenager? Hmm? Who did you go to for good advice when you were a teenager? Advice? Probably my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. That'd be about it. Mm -hmm. Never went to my mom. Mm -hmm. Father Venter talked to us girls a lot. Mm -hmm. He was a, a good mentor. Mm -hmm. He was, that's what they call it these days, that's what, definitely what he was in them days. Sure. He took care of his flock real well. Mm -hmm. That's a big church. Yeah. Who did you admire the most as a teenager? Who did I admire? President Roosevelt. Why? He was, he was my first hero. Because mm -hmm. he helped the poor people. Mm -hmm. First person that came along that really did something that I could see was helping the poor people. I just loved that man. Mm -hmm. and my boyfriend worked at Lloyd worked at the cemetery, mm -hmm. and he brought over a big flower and sat it on my porch because he knew how bad I would feel that day. Mm. Big flower for me. Sure. Yeah, he was my hero, and Kennedy was the next one. But those two presidents, well, Roosevelt couldn't live any longer, but if Kennedy would have lived, our, I really think our world would have been a different place right now. Mm -hmm. And the most money I ever earned an hour in my life was five dollars and eighty-five cents. Where was that? That's that last job I had at the Radisson. Sure. And my pension that I got from the thirteen years working at the rubber mills is is twenty dollars and fifty cents. I get check from uh, once a month. Once a month. No, I don't. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. Once a month I get twenty dollars. And my brother Daryl called that's what's called screwing the poor. <laughs> <laughs> How did you and Grandpa get engaged? How did you guys talk about getting well, married? I, we didn't really talk too much about it, but uh, we brought the ring along, we went for a walk, and uh, he gave me the ring and asked me to marry him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to ask anybody's opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, we had went for a walk and we picked all these beautiful violets and we stopped at Uncle Matt's bar. That's, he, that's where he asked me in the back, back bar, the back thing in the table in Uncle Matt's tavern. And then we had put had the violets on the table and he gave me the ring and uh, he said, he told me that 
for Grandpa to say, and I was just think of that this morning. He said, your eyes are like violets in the snow. Oh. Yeah, he did. And for him to say that, you know what kind of a fellow he was. Mm -hmm. Such a nice fellow, but not basically kind of shy. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, he meant it. Mm -hmm. The best thing that ever happened to me, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So how was your wedding? Hmm? Where was your wedding? At St. James Church mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock Mass. We had a party in the basement at Grandma's house. First we went to this fancy tea room and had our wedding dinner or what luncheon with the brides and grooms and all those people. Mm -hmm. And then we had a party at Uncle or Grandma Martha's house downstairs and uh, they did the basement all up real nice. And Uncle Matt played the accordion and people danced and drank beer and sang. Uh -huh. My dad was there and he was he gave me away. And he had to make a joke going walking down the aisle, and he whispered in my ear, the nuns were all in the front row, and then they all turned to look at He said, look, see how they're smiling? They got, they got another one in the flock. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was a Methodist. Sure, sure. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What was the date of, do you remember the date of your wedding? It was February, or February, August, uh, August 10th, August 10th. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1946. How old were you? I was almost 21. Sure. How old was Grandpa? He's 26, 27. He was six years older than I was. Six years. Did you have a honeymoon? Oh yeah. We went up to Birch Point. Mm -hmm. We stayed at the Hotel Stoddard the first night, mm -hmm. which was a very nice place. And then the next day we took the bus up to um, that place in up, uh, well, I would say it's by, I wouldn't say Haywood, but uh, it's up in that area some, some place. Mm -hmm. Dad used to go up there fishing with his buddies all the time, so that's where we went. And the day, the day we went up there, we always, we sent a nice big box of groceries up ahead of time. Good thing we did, because the day, day before, the chef quit. Oh no. <laughs> We had to make our own food. Oh, I didn't like that too well. I was looking forward to something for a nice treat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dr. Dan told you the funniest thing he ever did was he told me not to make sure I didn't salt the bacon. <laughs> Little did he know I knew how to cook already. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's great. I don't know how much I have. Um, I think I like. Five more minutes. Okay. Um, did you have any nicknames for Grandpa? I called him Jomi. Mm -hmm. That was his. And uh, when I was at, when I was having Jerry, and I said that I wanted Jomi to come in, and he, they thought I was talking about my doctor. They thought I had a crush on my doctor. The nurses did because his name his name was Joe. Oh. Doctor Joe. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, no, I don't mean him, I mean my husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. How did you get along with uh, with your in-laws? Well, I didn't get along with, with Grandpa. I got along real well because I knew him from the rubber mills. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know, but I didn't get along too good with Grandma mm -hmm. because she was kind of wanted to be a little bit bossy and she, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. But Boy, we really got to be very, very good friends. I just loved her. She loved me. Mm -hmm. She was so proud of me. She really was. Okay. She felt so bad because I had to work so hard, but because her mother had 13 children, so Martha knew just exactly what that I was going through. Sure. Does, Gra does Grandpa have any siblings? How many siblings did he have? He had uh, uh, Vivian, and he was the oldest, and Vivian, his sister, and then his brother Leroy. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest adjustment you had to make the first year of marriage? Well, I don't think I had to have had much of adjustment at all because I was used to being in a family, mm -hmm. and I was used to being having cooking and do, having to do things because I was brought up to know how to cook, and I didn't learn how to sew, but I had learned how to cook and I clean and 
do the stuff. I kind of enjoyed it, actually. Mm -hmm. It was something I was really looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went into, like, duck soup. Mm -hmm. How was your first house? What, what, what it, it was just a, <clears throat> a kitchen, a, a kitchen here, a bathroom off of here, a little porch off the back with some, with some ice box out there on the porch because back days you'd have, you know, fish, you know, I'm trying to say. Refrigerators or the, we had to wash I had to wash the clothes, diapers on the, the scrub board mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have a washing machine or nothing like that. And that was an everyday job. Yeah. That was that was a little hard, but when you were just only twenty years old or so you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're happy. Yeah. Exactly. And I was very happy. Sure, sure. Are there any things that you argued about or disagreed about? I don't think there was. Mm -hmm. I don't really, because uh, he just would take the check, his check to the bank and I took care of all the stuff. He didn't care it's what he wanted, mm -hmm. so he wanted it. Sure. He'd go to the store and get the groceries. The only thing he'd get mad at me, because when he'd bring the bags of groceries home, I was looking in the bag thinking, what are you looking for? I got what was on the list. And I said, well, I just thought maybe he might have picked up something else, bring a little treat of some kind. And he said, well, if you want something, then you should say, I got what was on your list. He didn't mad at me for that. <laughs> oh, it's funny. No, we didn't, we didn't argue. Mm -hmm. I can't, we would we'd get mad at each other, but we'd talk about it. But, oh, he was so kind. Mm -hmm. he, let, he told me there was nothing I couldn't do. If somebody else can do it, Pauline, so can you. Mm -hmm. And I and I wanted that job in the office so bad, and I, I would, I'm good at figures, mm -hmm. and um, I like doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I bid on it, and I got the job. But then my friend Yvonne, she got bumped off her job, so later on she bumped me. But anyway, I got to learn something that I never thought I could do. I had to take charge of all the people's getting their checks. I what company was that for? The rubber mills. Oh, I worked okay. at the rubber, rubber mills for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked at the Autolite plant first when we were first married, but then we, I didn't stay there very long because I got pregnant with Jerry, so Tony didn't want me to work. Mm -hmm. But when uh, everything started changing, the plant moved out of town, that kind of stuff, and two people had to work. Mm -hmm. You had to work, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I was scared to death to go to work at the rubber mills. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was. Mm -hmm. Why were you scared? Huh? Why were you scared? Well, it was just kind of a hard place, probably. Hard girls worked in there, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them not. Some scared just like me. My mother and my aunt. Started on the same day. My mother stayed till she was sixty, and Belle quit the next day. You know that kind of thing. Do, learning to do things you never did before, and you had to keep up because it was piecework. Sure. So, thing if that thing come by you, and you couldn't finish it, then you had to hurry up and try to get the other. Mm -hmm. So I soon found out a job where I could put souls together that I didn't have to do that. So I kind of more or less worked my way, and then I got the hang of it. Mm -hmm. But it was scary. Sure. At first. What was the hardest time in your marriage? The hardest time when you had dad had his open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our whole life changed. Sure. Completely changed. Mm -hmm. Nobody even knows mm -hmm. half of it. Sure. Yeah. It just um, your whole world is different. He wasn't. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the same person anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always worried about him all the time. And, mm -hmm that type of thing, but then we got kind of got through that too, but it was... How old was he when he had his open heart? Fifty years old. Okay. He had his 50th birthday in the hospital. Oh, okay. Tom's 52. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know just what Janie's going through. Mm-hmm. So what do you think was the glue that kept you guys together? We loved each other. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very much. Mm -hmm. And respected one another. Mm -hmm. You got to respect the person you 
live with. Mm -hmm. Of all the things that bother me the most is when I hear my children yelling at their husband or mm -hmm. using bad names or stuff like that. That just bothers me. Mm -hmm. I just, I never did it and I'm ashamed of myself when I say certain words, even to this very day. Sure. And I, for, to love somebody as much as you love your husband, mm -hmm. and I love Dad, how could you live with yourself if you would talk that way to him? I wouldn't talk that way to my children, let alone to my husband. Sure. Not that I, if he did something I didn't like, I let him know. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's just idea. This, the language you use sometimes, I could, I just, I just cringe. Mm -hmm. I see Gail and Joe don't do that. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. What did you admire most about Grandpa? Well, he was so clean. Mm -hmm. he, your dad is a splitting image of Grandpa. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as his, except for Fred's mannerisms mm -hmm. aren't the same. But he's so clean, and his hair, mm -hmm. oh, you couldn't touch Grandpa's <laughs> hair if he wanted to get, he would get so mad, the kids, the little ones would come over and he'd mess his hair up, he'd, <laughs> but no, he, he was clean and neat, and uh, he never caused me all kinds of concern, like some, he started going to the tavern after hunting, when we first got married, mm -hmm. and I, that was the end of it, he, I just, mm -hmm. when he come home from work, I picked up Jerry, Jerry was in sight here, and I put his little hat on him, and I put my hat on, and I went out the front door. I didn't tell them where I was going or what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I went down to my mother's and I, she took care of Jerry and I took in <coughs> Daryl up town and we went to a movie. Mm -hmm. And then I come back and went back home again. Mm -hmm. And I said, now from now on, that's exactly what I said, from now on, if you don't come home after you get done hunting and to start hanging in the taverns, this is what I'll do. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of that. Sure. One year, year he did, got kind of hunting, fishing, hunting, fishing, bowling. So I kept track of every single time he went someplace and every single time he came home. The time and at the end of the month, I t tallied up the uh, hours he was gone and I showed it to him. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to even say nothing. I just, just, I just wanted you to see how many hours you took away from your family this month. Mm -hmm. How many kids did you have at that time?